Well, one of my areas of interest and expertise is uh, treatment of uh, brain aneurysms. You know, the aneurysms are like balloons in the blood vessels of the brain, uh, which have a risk to uh, rupture and produce brain hemorrhage, which could be catastrophic and many patients don't even reach the hospital. Uh, before the hospital, they reach the hospital, they, they can succumb from the brain hemorrhage. But uh, about 50% of these patients can reach the hospital and then that is when they need uh, our expertise and our treatment. And uh, some of the most complicated cases uh, we have done over the period of years is, uh, you know, sometimes it's uh, some situation which is almost looks like hopeless and they come out of it and that makes your day. Um, some of these examples, one of the things which I would remember is, is a, uh, I think way back, uh, very, very long time back, I think around 2008, uh, we treated uh, the patient uh, uh, of a child who was a two and a half year old child with a massive brain hemorrhage. And uh, it was an aneurysm, which is called the basal top aneurysm, which is a very difficult area to treat. And it was treated by the, a technology which is a very advanced technology, which is called endovascular treatment. Unfortunately, that didn't work. And the child very rapidly get, got worse and started, um, you know, going into coma on the ventilator. Uh, it was almost a case where uh, no, no win situation. So that is when we had gone in and under uh, image guidance, we uh, approached uh, the case, uh, calculated our trajectory and went in and we uh, redid the whole thing, uh, corrected the problems which he had and put clips to occlude the balloon-like thing which had burst in the first place. And the child uh, actually had a very stormy post-operative course, was in the ICU for quite some time. Uh, but it was so reassuring that the child recovered. And at five years uh, post to this, the child was going to school uh, without any deficit whatsoever and was a completely normal child. So that is something which is a miraculous escape, I would say, of, uh, of the child uh, almost from a near death. Uh, situation to come back to become normal, um, which gives you that uh, so much of impetus to go on working in this field in spite of all the odds one faces uh, once in a while. Um, something uh, less dramatic, uh, but much more uh, useful and very, very uh, acceptable by the patient is something which we call the uh, minimally invasive uh, gamma knife radio surgery where uh, today we can treat uh, some of these tumors, not all, but some of these tumors we can treat without open surgery, without a cut, without a knife, without anesthesia. They say almost like a daycare procedure and the patient goes back uh, to work. There is no downtime. And this is again something which we started in South Asia. The first case was done at Hinduja Hospital on 14th of January 1997. And this incidentally happens to be the first case of gamma knife radio surgery, not only in India, but of all of South Asia. And we've been uh, treating that for a very long time now with satisfactory and very gratifying results. So I would say that uh, some of the greatest advances in neurosurgery has been the uh, minimally invasive neurosurgery in an adjunct to microsurgery uh, and the other adjuncts like endoscope and uh, uh, and the other thing I would I would talk about is gamma knife radio surgery.